Hello again, this is Jonathan Miller with the Hometown Historian Channel. Today we're at the Pennsylvania Historical Marker for Indian Town Gap Military Reservation. Uh, this was authorized in 1929. Uh, the first land was bought in 1931. It was first used by the National Guard in 1932 and in 1940 it was leased to the federal government as the Ar as Ar Army uh, Containment. I did not sound like saying that correctly. Total area is now more than 16,000 acres. We're actually going to do a drive through here and I'm going to talk quite a bit more about Fort Indian Town Gap. This is uh, the uh, main road that goes through. So I am going to pause here and then I'll talk more about uh, Fort Indian Town Gap. There's quite a bit to talk about uh, the history here. We'll do that as we do a drive through here. So we're leaving here where they had the Fort Indian Town Gap site as you are uh, entering the military reservation. Uh, this is quite a huge military reservation. Actually the Fort Indian Town Gap uh, Cemetery, that is also uh, back the other way. That's where my dad's buried. Uh, this here is where the Lieutenant Governor's Mansion is. It's quite a cool place actually. Uh, I don't think anybody's there right now, but that is the Lieutenant Governor's Mansion. That's been that way for quite a while. Uh, this was Indian Town Gap was uh, started in 1931. It was under the recommendation of General Edward uh, or Ed, Edward or Edwin Mar uh, Martin, and uh, which I'll put a picture up of him at some point. I believe there's a building here somewhere too that is like a National Guard Museum, which we will try to stop at some point. We're going to go right past the airport, but uh, under his recommendation, this was uh, this facility was made. Uh, they had originally the National Guard Training Center had been in uh, Mount Gretna, but it outgrew it. So he had recommended they find a place that would work, and Fort Indian Town Gap was the place that he decided to work. Uh, as a uh, military reservation and base. Uh, in 1940, they actually leased it to the federal government because of the onset of World War II. They used it as a training center. We had stopped at Marquette Lake. Uh, that there, here's where we had uh, checked out all the different uh, tanks and vehicles and helicopters. We will come back at some point, and that is the air base for the helicopters and planes. Uh, and this is one of the large cargo planes which we will stop at as well at some point. We will uh, do another video on that where we'll concentrate more on the videos than the plaques because a number of people requested that. And there are a couple other really, really cool places here in Indian Town Gap uh, that uh, are quite significant that we'll put in that, that video as well. We'll do another one. Uh, but anyways, they went ahead and got this base prepared for the federal government for the US Army they made over 1400 buildings like I said they used Marquette Lake or made Marquette Lake specifically to train soldiers to uh, be able to disembark and embark on watercraft you know, i.e. example would be uh, D-Day invasion they were preparing uh, the troops for that type of stuff uh, I remember coming through here as a kid, uh, a lot of the old World War II buildings are all gone. Uh, they tore down a lot of those barrack buildings. I just remember the old white sort of clapboard uh, buildings and uh, it was just such a unique place to come through. But they, uh, in times of war, uh, this base was very, very important. Uh, this was the stopping ground for most troops in World War II as they went to New York to the uh, port to go over to Europe so and then at the end of the war this is also where uh, the troops would come to be released from service so very important base over time uh, I believe it was reactivated for federal uh, government for during the Korean Wars and Vietnam Wars and I know it also during the Persian Gulf War it was also used here by US Army uh, so quite a bit of history here. I am going to do a little bit more where I'm going to talk about the uh, original history of this being, there's a reason it's called Fort Indian Town Gap because during French and Indian Wars when the Susquehannock uh, Indians, Native Americans joined up with the French, 
uh, this was there's a gap where Indian Town Run Creek comes through and that was one of the pathways like Swatera Gap and uh, Manita Gap that they had to make a fort so thus you know this was known this whole area was known as Indian Town because the scattering of uh, Native American villages in the area and therefore when it became a fort it was known as Fort Indian Town Gap uh, and played an integral role in the defense of this area just like Fort Swatera uh, which we're going to visit in a little bit and also uh, Fort Manada which is uh, west of here we're going to visit that today as well and talk about both of them their history and also talk about the Swatera Gap uh, and its importance in, in history uh, with French and Indian War so with that that is we are out of Indian Town Gap and uh, we will sign off but like I said we'll do a little bit more I want to talk about the the history a little more in depth and that type of stuff and then also talk about uh, whether it's Edward Edward or Edwin Martin and actually try to I'm hoping I'll be able to find a picture because he has quite a history as well in serving uh, both our country and our state thanks everybody Major General Edward Martin was put in charge of finding a new base of operations for a National Guard base that had been outgrown in Mount Gretna. He looked around and found the perfect place at Fort Indian Town Gap. He then went on to become the 32nd Governor of Pennsylvania from 1943 to 1947, then moving on to becoming a United States Senator from 1947 to 1959. After his death in 1967, they renamed Fort Indian Town Gap as Edward Martin Military Reservation. This name stuck for quite a time until the state of Pennsylvania decided to make the name match up with its other military bases. Also, the residents of that base had become so accustomed to calling it Fort Indian Town Gap, the name just sort of stuck.